So welcome, everybody. I believe this is going to be on the stream and we're good live. Can somebody on the live stream chat window just make sure that uh, we are broadcasting and you are capturing that, uh, even if you're a guest or something? I'm going to say yes, even though I don't think there's something there. And I am seeing the, uh, the audio go up and down. So welcome, everybody, here. Uh, I'm seeing a good, decent one, two, three, four, a bunch of people here. Uh, obviously not a full chair room, so we'll be hopefully discussing that a little later. Um, but I wanted to welcome you to the second event of February, um, well, the second event of 2013. Uh, HTML5 Group has uh, grown, obviously, a lot over the last little while. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've launched the htmltoronto.ca site which is a site devoted to you guys. So that is going to be uh, blogs on there, posts on there from guest commentators. Um, we're going to have guests come in and do right. Anybody who was at the hackathon last year as well? Uh, anybody in the audience here at the hackathon last year? Yes, I don't believe you were. A couple people were. Uh, this was back in February with RIM. Uh, so what we're going to be doing, anybody who posted an article for that, contact me because we are going to integrate those into the website as well. It's your content, it's your site, this is for the group, so making sure that if you have an idea for an article and you post it in the past, or you have an idea for an article now, let's see you. Let's, let's actually showcase Toronto's developers and Canadian developers uh, and show what talent we have. So contact me, Matthew, at htmltoronto.ca. If you do have an idea or a concept, you want to submit something, code snippets, uh, ideas, any type of, hey, I did this neat little snippet here or uh, idea, submit it. Let's see if we can get these things posted, and we'll do a little bio on you. I get you known in the industry. Um, other things coming down the line. So we are going to be doing uh, live streams on a regular basis. So if you do have any interactive or engaging things that you want to be doing, uh, or uh, say, for instance, you want to learn about geotagging or geolocation in HTML, let's do an event on geolocation, or let's do a stream on geolocation. Um, and then what we'll do is the next week, or the follow-up week to that, Let's demonstrate what you guys have done. Show what you guys are capable of. Uh, so that'll be every week, uh, potentially either Saturday or Sunday. Uh, depending, I'm still working out the brand name, either streaming Sundays or streaming Saturdays or streaming when I get the chance to because I might be doing something on the weekend. Um, but patent pending on the name. Uh, so tonight, um, we've got a uh, couple things. First off, I, I wanted to give a big, big shout out to Awanda. Awanda? Oanda, thank you. I did pronounce it wrong on the live stream, the first live stream and possibly the second one. So now that I have been corrected, I will make sure that I say it's Oanda. Um, but I'll have them come up in a minute just to give a brief talk on who they are. Uh, but for them tonight to come on as a sponsor, we're going to be having uh, pizzas, beverages, salads, uh, dinner for you guys, making sure that you guys are well fed and interacting and engaging with us, coming out to these events, um, and, and as well as a few other things coming down the line. So they've been able to make this happen. So right now, if you're watching me on the live stream or you're watching me after the fact, this is because of them, right? Without that, we would not be able to have this HD streaming. Um, HD is in sub 720 due to computer pro com complications. Um, but you're going to see this here, the constant loop of me, I guess, uh, is due to them. Um, before that, we were obviously doing something on Google+, which didn't work out, uh, but many people have asked us to see if we can bump this up. So got a couple sponsors, or got a sponsor now that's doing this. It's because of them. So if you get a chance, uh, I'm going to seriously ask you guys, give a shout out on Twitter. Just say, thanks, Oanda. So at O-A-N-D-A. -A, um, and say, thanks for supporting the HTML5 underscore, HTML underscore, uh, HTML5 underscore Toronto web developers group. Um, it means a lot to me, and it just makes sure that there's good recognition to say, listen, this is the group. You guys are sponsoring us. Thank you. You're supporting the community. Uh, so with that said, I do want to invite them up to just say a quick word. No? Nothing? N sorry? J just So we're going to have Jason Primo come up uh, and say a quick word, I guess, uh, which is fine. I'll, I'll, we really expect. Um, and say who Awanda is uh, and what they're doing and what they're planning on doing. Because one of the reasons that I really wanted to have these guys come in is because they have an API, they're building out some really cool stuff for the developers to use uh, and build some innovative products. So come on up, Jason, and uh, take over. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm going to be really brief because I've been in your seat before and I know the main thing I want the sponsor to do is just be quiet and let the uh, presentation start. Uh, my name is Jason Primo. I'm the uh, Director of Development at uh, OANDA. 
I've been there for 13 years actually. And um, one thing I'm going to go into limb and say is most of you probably don't know who OANDA is or what we do. Uh, we are a foreign exchange trading corp company. Uh, and what that is sort of like is like a uh, stock trading company. But instead of trading stocks and bonds, we actually trade um, currencies. So if you or any other investor thinks you can make money buying and selling yen or euros or Chinese yuan, whatever it is, um, you can trade through us and do that. And we also provide all of the software to do it as well. Um, another thing that's uh, similar to the stock market and probably more interesting to this crowd is that um, over time we've created a... Uh, a real-time, large-scale, high-frequency trading application, uh, and it's operating and trading 24-7 uh, and has uh, billions of dollars going through it every single day. So it's a really big problem that we're trying to solve, and uh, we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of traction in the market. Uh, the other thing uh, that I'd like to say is that we're actually really excited to sponsor HTML5 Toronto. Uh, I think it's a really great way for us to get our uh, name out into the community. Um, we've been around in Toronto for 15 years, but most people don't know that. Uh, we've grown to uh, about 100 engineers, uh, about 50 or 60 software developers, uh, and we've been around for, for actually almost about 15 years. Uh, but nobody knows about us because we've been really internally focused up till now. Uh, and this is something by sponsoring these kinds of events that uh, we'd like to change and get our name out into the developer community. Uh, we've got some really big plans with HTML5 internally within our uh, website, as well as our uh, trading applications that customers will use. Uh, so I'm really excited to uh, be able to sponsor this uh, event because it uh, gives us uh, face time with some really, uh, really key people. Uh, Last thing, uh, I also, other than uh, being excited to get into the community, it's also great to know that we managed to pass Matt's test. Uh, when I first reached out to Matt, uh, he, uh, he reacted with a little bit of suspicion. I think he was a little bit concerned that we were uh, just a stuffy financial institution that was looking to sort of blow the last of its uh, promotional budget. Uh, but uh, I, hopefully he can, uh, he can attest to the fact that we're much more of a technology company that does finance rather than the uh, other way around. Uh, so again, thank you very much. Really excited to uh, sponsor this event. And my name is Jason. Uh, Corey and Mark are here as well. We are, of course, hiring. Uh, and if you have any other general questions about OANDA, I'd uh, love to talk to you about it. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Jason. So uh, yes, um, one of the things that I'm, I'm making sure with the group is that we're not just taking in every type of sponsor, although I would love to have every sponsor's money, um, making sure that we have the right people for this. Uh, and I can truly say that I went to Oanda yesterday um, and mopped the floor with Jason at table tennis. Absolutely ravaged him. Um, but they do have uh, that type of office and that type of environment that is very, very developer friendly. It wasn't a financial institution, it wasn't, which blew me away and I really like that. So seriously, I am watching out for you guys. Um, I am thinking about you guys and making sure that it's not just any Joe Blow that can come in and sponsor the group and whatnot. Um, so thank you. So second sponsor, uh, which I do have to mention briefly here, uh, Microsoft. Uh, so we are at Mars Commons right now. Uh, this space that we're in right now, the Mars Commons, is actually part Microsoft owned. So they helped us out, reach out and get this space. Uh, the space is free and uh, they are hosting developer movement, web not war. Um, but they happen to have an event at the same day we are. Um, hopefully some of them are watching from that event. Um, we are hosting an event with jQuery, uh, sorry, JavaScript Toronto and DevTO Toronto, who pay attention to the Twitter streams and stuff. We'll post links after, but we're launching an event tonight. Pay attention later, or go to DevTO's meetup site. They're launching it there. Uh, one last quick one here. If anybody ever is drinking and driving, I will banish you from the meetup group. Um, one of the things I have here is a $5 voucher for Halo Cabs. I'm not going to spend too long. If you want, take one, please. Seriously, it's a cab, $5 off cab rides. We also have HTML5 Toronto, another $5 on top of this, $10. Do not drink and drive. Seriously, I've had history in the past, not me, but people I know, just don't drink and drive. So with that being said, I wanted to introduce um, our great speaker, Alex Tucker, who is a speaker this weekend at jQuery Toronto as well. Um, and to do the full introduction and who he is, I can't really do it justice um, as much as he probably could. So I'm going to have him do a brief little about me thing when he comes up, sits down at his computer uh, to, do a to do the presentation, to do this walkthrough of... Uh, WebRTC. Now, anybody in the room know what RTC stands for? 
Real-time communication. Awesome. Thank you. You heard me say it yesterday, didn't you? No? Awesome. Okay. So without further ado, round of applause, Alex Tucker. Yeah, so I'm Alex Tucker. I'm a technical director at B-Notions. Uh, what's B-Notions? B-Notions is uh, you know, a software agency, but now we're calling ourselves Innovation Partners. Uh, we work with big brands, entrepreneurs, and startups to help them make a uh, great software product. You're good? OK. Adjustments of the camera. Um, my job at B-Notions is I spend about half my time on a team actually writing code and the other half um, representing my team to the business side and also facilitating a lot of training and stuff like that. Uh, we actually have a huge uh, workshop culture at B-Notions. About four or five nights a week, there's uh, all of our engineers volunteer to run workshops and attend workshops. So doing this type of things, uh, pretty normal for me. I do it about every week. So. Um, the way I run these, do we have, um, Matt, can you put the link up for the GitHub repo? Sorry. Can you put the link up for the GitHub repo? Absolutely, I will. Um, mm -hmm. There's a GitHub repo that has all of the, uh, all of the material in it tonight, all the dependencies packaged up. So you can code along with me. Um, I, this is not a talk, it's a workshop. There's actually going to be writing code. Uh, if you don't have a laptop, uh, I think you should uh, make friends with someone and uh, try to pair program in these seats, which is going to be hard. Um, <laughs> OK. Are we good, Matt? OK. Um, so we have, uh, if you go to that URL and you can clone or download the zip file of that repo. Cool. Um, so if you're, you know how to use Git, you can clone this repo. If you don't, you can click on this little zip button here and it'll download a zip file of the entire repo. Uh, the way this, uh, the way I generally have my workshops laid out is that the master branch is all kind of the starting code, all the boilerplate, so you don't have to write it, and we can just skip over that. And then uh, you can actually switch branches to the solution branch, and you can see the full solution or a possible solution to the demos we're gonna we're gonna tackle tonight. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to set that up. Uh, on top of that, uh, WebRTC, uh, for the most part, requires that you serve your files from a web server. So you can't just double click on the HTML file and use file stuff in the browser. Uh, so I have notes here on two different ways of starting really simple um, HTTP servers. Uh, one is using Python. If you're on a Mac, you actually don't have to download anything. You can just put this in the command line. Um, but an actual, a, more, a better solution is actually use this little tool uh, from Node. Uh, it's a lot faster um, and a little simpler. Does anyone need help? Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll do my quick little introduction to what WebRTC is before we actually start diving into the code. Uh, so WebRTC is a real-time communications protocol uh, that is designed to uh, solve a problem of capturing media from inside a web browser and allowing 
peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication between browsers. Um, this came out of uh, as HTML5 became popular and Flash and other other third-party plugins, you know, are are kind of losing their market share now. Uh, we need a real way to, you know, capture someone's webcam. Uh, and how do we connect two browsers together so they can have a video chat? Or how can they transfer files directly to each other? Because if we could cut, cut out the middleman in a lot of situations, it would help everyone. So I believe the story is, is that the uh, Google has two products that they really need to not have plugins for anymore. And that's uh, Google, uh, Google Hangouts and Google Talk. Both have great, great video in the browser, but they require like a Google plugin, and it kind of sucks. So they kind of pushed, they've pushed WebRTC really far, and uh, the reason why I'm giving a talk about WebRTC today is because it's finally kind of making its way into the mainstream. So the now the stable builds of Chrome now have WebRTC enabled. Um, I believe Firefox does, don't quote me on it, but they recently have had demos of like Chrome talking to, having a video chat with Firefox. So the spec, it, you know, everyone's staying to the spec this time and there's no crazy quirks. Any more uh, than Safari? Um, I mean, it'll probably just be, probably simple. It's probably, I would hope it's built into WebKit the way Chrome did it. But um, nobody cares what I use. But Safari is important. Uh, mobile Safari is important. Yes. Desktop. I mean, in my industry, it's desktop Safari. Cool. Um, if if Google didn't already do it, let's have, hope Apple fix cool. it up. But uh, it's it's been proven. It's um, it's been really designed with the developer in mind. The API is really really nice. Um, so, um, the, you can go to webrtc.org. This is kind of the boring spec page for it. Um, I'm not going to give too much of a crazy intro into WebRTC because there's some great resources out there for you to learn about it, particularly this, ro this link from HTML5 rocks. Um, there's this great video by one of the guys who's behind, who is behind getting the the spec out there and is now a, a huge evangelist for it. Um, so WebRTC is actually comprised of three things. You want to be able to get media from your client. You want to be able to uh, connect two browsers together and allow them to communicate directly with each other. And you want to have a, a audio and video transport so you can easily facilitate uh, those media interactions because they're so common. So I'm actually only going to talk about one of these three things, and that's just simply how do I get media from the client. I'm not going to talk about any of the data trans transfer stuff, um, mainly because I don't want to bore you. <laughs> but um, there's some great resources already being built around these. Um, the other day on GitHub, what's this? Um, someone wrote a really great um, wrapper around uh, WebRTC's um, uh, data transport. So you can just, just do um, like uh, socket IO style eventing and it's completely peer to peer. Uh, <coughs> so I think in the next few months, you're going to see a lot more great abstractions being built on top of this to make it more and more developer friendly, but it already is really, really easy to use. So everyone who's going to code along, are you good? Yes? Okay. Yep. If you're on a Mac, this Python one should work without you doing anything. Yes. 
Yep. Yep. So if you go to your browser, yep. you go to localhost 8080, uh, you should see something like this. And the demo that we're going to first go into is called slash simple. As long as you start the web server from the root of the GitHub project, this should work. Okay, cool. So, the first thing we want to do is we simply just want to capture the person's webcam. So, uh, also, this will only work in Chrome. Uh, you, have, you need either the latest version of Chrome or Canary or something like that. Um, so if you open up, um, uh, source WebRTC demos or WebRTC demos slash simple, there's a uh, index.html. Um, and I already have, uh, a whole bunch of markup done for you. Uh, importing some dependencies. Actually, there's really no dependencies. It's just kind of my standard boilerplate. Um, so let's look at the get user media API. So there's this new command called navigator dot get user media. And it takes uh, two arguments. One is the media that you want to get. So you can either you can get video or audio or both. So we're just going to grab the video right now, and then it takes a callback function, and its argument is a is the stream that it's going to generate for you. Here's my one thing I already hate about this. Even though Chrome has been you know leading the way on getting this API to market you have to put a webkit prefix in front of the function name so even if we just leave that blank Uh, and you refresh your browser now, you should get this little pop-up at the top that asks if you want to allow your webcam. And if you press allow, your little webcam light or something should turn on, but nothing will happen because we haven't attached the stream to anything. Okay, so how do we get that stream uh, to show the video? Well, since this uh, you know, plays nice with HTML5, we're actually just going to use a simple video tag, and we're going to uh, convert, uh, use a function to get a URL of that stream that's like local to the browser and set it as the source of that video element. And it's that simple uh, how to kind of replay back video. So if uh, you, uh, is it? So I was going to uh, select the uh, video element. And then I'm going to set its source. And there's a nice little uh, convenience function called url.createObjectURL. And it just takes that stream that was passed through the callback.
So now, if you refresh your browser, they'll ask you again, and you should see some video come up. Cool. So it's that simple to capture video from a webcam now. It takes like no effort. So, um, any questions? It's not Wakanda ID, right? No. Basically, the only person that support the only browser that supports this right now is Chrome and Firefox. Uh, yeah, you can actually just get go to the GitHub repo, and all this code is in there. Uh, if you switch to the solution branch, and then each of the projects has the full solution inside of it. So that's the code we just wrote. And if we want to grab just the audio stream, is that yeah, so as simple as just switching video to audio? Or yep. Something? So you can, this is just a normal uh, JavaScript object. You can do, if you want both, you can just do. Uh, yeah, or video with the audio. Yeah. Or you can do either or. So I noticed there's a, like a quarter of a second delay when the video is at. Is there anything we can do about that? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I think you're going to see some sort of latency all the time. Okay. Like even on Skype and stuff. There yeah, it is, but, so. I mean, this is like local. but it is it is always going to be local. WebRTC is when it comes like if you're if you're only like looking at the client's media, and you're not worrying right. about. Cool. But you can see yourself through the same camera, but you cannot really record, right? Um. Uh, so someone was asking if you could record the video. Um, you probably could. I don't know how. Because like, you have this stream object. Uh, so I imagine there's some way of actually probably using like um, the HTML5 file API to actually like write this to disk somehow. Good question, though. Yeah. And then save the stream data. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's the answer. You can save it. But can you save it locally? That'd be cool. Any questions? I noticed that the video is a mirror image. Is there a yeah. Um, is I've noticed. It or? So you can. Um, we're going to get into that okay. next. <laughs> uh, not specifically, but I think you'll see the solution. Any more questions? Okay, so naturally, the next thing pe what people want to do is after you can catch a webcam, <coughs> is you want to make a photo booth, right? So uh, if you go to WebRTC demos slash photo booth and uh, edit index.html, I've kind of handled uh, some boilerplate for you. And if you just in your browser go to localhost slash photo booth now. Uh, we're going to make a little photo booth app. So there's two things that you can do um, when it comes to manipulating the video. Um, one of them actually is really simple. Uh, okay, so this is the same thing that we did before, just capturing the normal video. Because this is an HTML5 element, it's actually responsive to CSS. So I'm actually just going to use... Now, um, there's a whole bunch of new filters. Uh, there's a, this filter element now, and one of the filters is called blur. So you can actually like blur the video. And that's you know real time. They have a whole bunch of filters. Is like grayscale. Uh, 
I think it was also like even sepia, which is kind of weird. So you can transform the video like right on the element. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually s capture the frames and put them in a canvas. Now that sounds difficult, but it's really, really easy. Um, so what we want to do is when you, we want to press this take photo button and we want in here to see like a static image of what was it, what was on the video at that time. So let's uh, figure out that. So if you, I made uh, one little modification basically to uh, the last demo and it's that I made this kind of reference to the stream object because uh, I want to be able to check that when I click that take photo button that if there isn't a stream I don't want to try to like play with it. So just to be safe, I'm going to do something like this. If not local stream, just get out of there. So uh, I've already kind of did all the boilerplate to um, set up a canvas, set up a 2D context. Now, this is not a a tutorial on canvas but there's nothing really crazy going on here um, but the canvas element is the actual element the context is how you can actually uh, perform operations on that element so we need to do one thing first and that is we need to ensure that our video element and our canvas are set to the <coughs> same size because uh, when it, when you actually write the 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 image that we're going to capture from the video element, if it's not the same size, it'll clip it. So you can just do canvas dot height equals video dot client height. This is kind of the tricky part. And what we'll just do is ensure that the canvas has the same height and width as the video. So when we capture it, there's no weird clipping. So there's only one thing you you can, in one line of code, capture the image. It's really simple. Uh, the canvas API already pretty much supports capturing from video elements. So uh, from the context, there's a function called draw image. And the first argument is um, some sort of element. That could be an image element or a video element. So I'm going to pass in that video element and give it its initial coordinates that I want to draw to. Any questions? So now, if you refresh and allow, if I didn't screw this up, press take photo, you'll get a static still of that. Nice <laughs> <laughs> so the cloud width and the cloud height, can you uh, make larger or smaller? Um, <laughs> so you can scale this afterwards. Um, normally, like uh, the way a lot of people is, are using the manipulation is that they'll have a hidden canvas on the page that they'll write to and then do canvas transformations on that hidden, cam that hidden canvas and write that to either an image or another canvas. 
Um, so this is cool, but you can't. Uh, a user, uh, you know, my mom would think that this is like an actual image, and she could save this. But you can't because it's a canvas element. If I, you know, I don't see the save image thing on here. So wouldn't it be cool if we could also generate an image as well that you could save? Uh, again, one line of code, and you know, we can make that happen because there's great APIs for handling this. So I have an image tag or an image element. I'm going to set it source. And the canvas element has a awesome function on it called to data URL. And it takes a MIME type, which is just going to be Im image slash PNG. So this will actually write PNGs. And if we refresh the page, take a photo, you'll see the canvas and then the actual image. That's a bad picture. So this is actually a real image that you could actually save now. There you go. It's a real image that you can save to your desktop. And with that in mind, and I showed you before how you can just apply arbitrary CSS filters, you can do all the crazy photo booth stuff that you expect. And then it, for any of the like, really intense, like fisheye or any sort of like mirroring effects or whatever, you can just figure out how to do that in Canvas. And because you have the context of a Canvas already, it's not going to be that difficult. There's already like tons of libraries for Canvas for doing that types of image effects. <clears throat> any questions? Oh, so you were talking about the mirroring. Yeah. So um, you don't have to just take uh, stills. You can actually, oh, another thing that's quite common is that not using a, you, you have, you hide the video elements, but stream all the frames to a canvas, because then you can just manipulate the canvas in real time. Can you use a WebKit transform on the video elements? Probably. <laughs> I mean, everything pretty much works in terms of CSS on the video element, so that's probably an even better solution. That would be like a hardware accelerated solution. One of the interesting things I've been trying to do with it is uh, uh, along with the HTML5 video is using it to create dynamic frames where you're saying <coughs> capture this area and transpose an object over top of it. Unfortunately, the processing power that you need to have to do that real time into Canvas, then the transform, is a bit more than most browsers have at the moment. Yeah. Cool. So you put like a mustache on or something like that. In fact, that might need to be a demo, or that's, there's tons of samples out there of, of that exact thing. Anyone try to throw a QR code scanner into it? It'd probably, you know, be probably pretty easy. And once you know the mobile browsers support it, then you could have web apps that have pretty much the native functionality that we've been missing, right? I think PhoneGap's pretty much dead once. The, uh, <laughs> there's, there's two browsers out there on the mobile devices that do support this right now. A custom build of Opera for Android. And although I haven't confirmed this, um, BlackBerry 10 has WebRTC, and again, Please don't quote me on this, but I had heard yesterday from somebody who was supposed to be here tonight that it does work in BlackBerry 10 browser. Any other? How about the 
security here, but I want to only forget and check with other people. I don't want any other people to. Yeah, so again, tonight, all I'm talking about is how do you like, capture like, your local media. I'm not talking about transferring it. But the, the whole audio video part is part of the spec. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's fairly secure or it wouldn't have gone this far. It, you, uh, the, way, the way it pretty much works is that you have a server that acts as a... a as a third party that does the handshake between the two clients. So it ensures that they know about who they are, but um, it would block third parties from getting that information. So it's peer to peer after the connection is established or negotiated. Okay, so that is how to use um, get user media and you know how to put frames in a canvas, how to do a little bit of manipulation. Um, so I think that's probably as far as I want to go with that. I want to show you a library that's been built on top of WebRTC. Um, called head tracker. Uh, this is already, in, if you have the uh, GitHub repo, it's already included in there. You don't have to download it. But basically um, what this does is um, using techniques similar to what we've been doing tonight is it uses a face detection algorithm uh, to figure out where in the frame your face is. And it has a really great evented API to report to you, you know, where the face is in the frame, its boundaries, even uh, like distance, angle, a whole bunch of really crazy stuff. Um, I'm gonna show you two relatively simple demos. Um, but I mean, it's actually pretty performant and it's really just the limit of your imagination what you want to do. Uh, so for this demo, uh, it's in uh, WebRTC demo slash head tracker. <coughs> and there's another index.html in there. And in your browser, if you go to localhost, head tracker without an E. Uh, it's all kind of set up there. So, head tracking's great, um, but we're going to build a little demo to kind of utilize the data that's coming out of its events. So I'm going to use a simple canvas app that lets you use your head as a pen. It's really, really hard to draw stuff, but it's fun. <laughs> um, so Head Tracker has, again, a great API, super developer friendly. Um, uh, just uh, get a new uh, tracker object from the head tracker library. And it needs uh, it needs it has an init function that takes two arguments, and one of them is the the video a video element and a canvas element. So I was kind of trying to demonstrate to you before that yes, we can get video, but we really need a canvas to do a lot of the processing. So the first argument is the video. 
and I already kind of got little cached uh, query selectors in there for you. And one is a canvas for the tracker. Um, you'll notice that um, I've set, I've automatically set the uh, style on that canvas to display none because it really kind of does the work behind the scenes that has really nothing to show. Uh, and I set the height and width on it. Um, I believe Head Tracker will actually scale the video down to the size of the canvas for you automatically. So it doesn't, you know, the bigger the, the frames, the more processing power it's going to need. So this is just to make things safe. And then you just do tracker.start and that will kick off uh, the head tracking. So uh, it just uses plain old JavaScript events. And we're going to be looking at one of the events called the face tracking event. And we're just going to it's going to log this event. And we're going to take a look at what's inside, what kind of data do they make available to you from these events. Okay. So if you uh, reload your browser, now your console is mm -hmm. going to get flooded. Uh, so if we crack one open, you're going to see a whole bunch of really interesting data. We're kind of, I'm interested in two things. Uh, this X and Y coordinate here is the center of your face uh, inside of the canvas. They also have like the uh, the height of the face that it's detecting, the width of the face that it's detecting. Um, they do some like angle detection. Uh, they tell you what kind of algorithm it used to actually detect your face. Um, there's another event type that's a little more raw. Um, if you go to if you go to their GitHub repo and click this link to the reference, I believe there's two other events. They have like a status uh, event. So if your app wants to keep track of like connectivity and like display um, messages based on if you can't track your face anymore or whatever. They also have this head tracking event, uh, which just gives you uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates on a, on a plane. It's not like, it's not the, it's not the X, Y on the canvas, but more if the canvas was the center, you have to do a little, little bit more math. Um, but I'm not, we don't need crazy hardcore stuff. So face tracking event, let's hook that up to, uh, canvas. So you can use your face as a pen. So before I'm going to kill this log. Um, I missed it here. We need the, uh, the context from that canvas. so we can uh, draw on it. Uh, 
And I'm actually just going to move this canvas element uh, up beside uh, our video. It'll be a little more uh, interesting to see how that works. So again, drawing to a canvas is really easy. We're just going to do context. They have this thing called fill style. And this takes a string, which is, you know, basically you, you can set a color. I'm just going to set red here. And Context has a function called fill rect that lets you draw rectangles. Um, so the first uh, two, what? Oh. Come on, I haven't screwed up yet. Uh, the first two uh, arguments are the x, y of the starting position. And uh, that's going to be the X and Y coming out of the event uh, from the face tracking. And then it, the next two arguments are how big from an X, Y perspective you want these rectangles to be. So let's make them pretty small, five pixels by five pixels. And that should be it. So if we reload this, so you can actually draw your face. And when I was working on this demo and my fiance was watching me just like sit, like do this for like 20 minutes, she thought I was going crazy. <laughs> but with face tracking, it's so fun. You can. <laughs> yeah. So the way uh, traditional face tracking algorithms, there's like a T shape that's formed on a human face uh, with your eyes and your nose. Yeah, so like, but I'm convinced that if you just drew a face on your hand, it would probably work. Yeah. Any requests? I'll try to draw something. <laughs> um, it's kind of like etch a sketch. You can only, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Stick figure. Ugh. You, you lose your position. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, he's done the splits anyway. <laughs> uh oh, the wrong way. Anywho, I almost. I, I had arms and splits. <laughs> Drawing a circle really hard with your head. Can you detect any other gestures or. Face? No. So this is just head tracking. Um, because it, it exploits a really well-known head tracking algorithm. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't try to tell you what, who the face no. is. It just reduces any heuristics. Just, it just tells you if there's a face in the frame. Man, man, woman, child. I know a lot of the early, well, 
yeah. really good tracking system tool. I don't know what the, what the algorithm is, distance between eyes or something, but it can tell men from women pretty easily. We use that for advertising campaigns for out-of-home signage. Cool. So you can see. Well, I think you should fork the repo and yeah. add it in. I, I have a, I mean, I'm going to build an application off the first demo. Um, I have a 3D Polaroid camera. I'm going to put the the video canvas inside the mm. um, viewfinder or whatever that's called, and then you're going to take a photo and it's going to spit out the Polaroid and do that over socket so you can take a picture of somebody else from mm. they look through the viewfinder and see the other person. That'd be cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. No, this is really fun. <laughs> cool. So, yes, drawing with your head is really fun <laughs> and really hard. But uh, I had one other demo. Um, it's kind of an early prototype of something I'm working on. Um, so I want to show you guys it because I think the thing that's really like a lot of this uh, like video stuff and can like head tracking, you're like, oh, games or photo stuff. But I wanted to like apply this to the web somehow. How could you like? How can we expand the web, just a normal website using head tracking? So uh, let's go into that demo. Uh, and I had this idea that once if like there's one, one of the popular head tracking demos you see is like a 3D perspective, but from a 2D screen. So it's like, if you rotate your head your, the stage is rotating inside, so it looks like it's 3D, but it's not. Uh, so, like the the perspective of what you're looking at changes based on the position of your head. And I was like, wouldn't that be cool if you had that for websites? And you had like secret content off the screen, but if you was exploring and they like looked, they could look into your website through the side and see I don't know some Easter eggs or a coupon code or something cool. Oh yeah, I saw that. To the, to the monitor. But personally, I think that would be annoying because sometimes what you're doing is you are trying to look closer and then it sort of it shrinks as it gets closer than it to expect as you further away. Yeah, so for the people on the stream, one of the other demos for like web and face tracking was that you could make the text uh, grow and shrink based on the person's distance from the webcam. Uh, I played with the demo and it was interesting, but you know, once you got far away enough, there's this like one character on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. I just tried I feel like there should be a way to do it though. Because like I've seen like face tracking demos where they will find all faces in a screen. Again, all this is open source, so if you have ideas and you have a lot of time, <laughs> <laughs> you could do the atten Matt's attendance could just be webcam. <laughs> yes, I'd be willing to use that for the next event. <laughs> Okay, it just counts people in the room. Yeah. With or just takes up the, so you said up the canvas, any kind of recognizes the face, mm -hmm. grabs it out of script and saves it out as a file. So that you then have everyone who's walked by there. Ah, I see. As you walk in, there's a webcam yeah. right there. You would probably have duplicates and whatnot, and you would actually, you would be able to go through the event and actually have an attendance match it up with, yeah. if, as long as people actually have photos on. Yeah, not their dogs, but their actual face. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people don't have, have their own face. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the last demo we're going to look at is in WebRTC demos slash perspective. Um, and if you open this up in your browser right now, so localhost slash perspective, 
uh, the implementation is kind of weird. So I, I generalized kind of how it would work, and it was like, if you got started getting close to the side of something, this like secret content that was rendered off screen kind of becomes visible. So I want it so if you move your head over here, you're actually like looking into the screen. So instead of tracking mouse movement, let's track head movement instead. Uh, so we're already off to a pretty good start here. Um, I wrote this little function that will take the percentage that uh, that some sort of marker is on a canvas or on the, on the screen or something, and then do the proper CSS transform to show that uh, content that's rendered off the screen. So let's get rid of this uh, mouse listener here and just uncomment these two lines to start the head tracker up. And we're going to bind to that face tracking event again. So one of the things we need to figure out first is, um, well, let's just, what we want to do is we want to take the canvas, figure out the width of the canvas, figure out the X position that you are, your face is in, and then figure out which percentage of the screen that, or which percentage of the X axis your face is in and then pass that into the show left function and it should pretty much work. And just to um, basically this little calculation, um, you can tweak this and it's basically like if I move in, I don't want to start showing it until I appear in a certain portion of the screen. Um, I also even found that kind of a, a quick hack to make it feel a little bit better was actually making the, the perceived width of the canvas even a little bit smaller just so it would if you move your head too close to the edge of the screen you might stop tracking it so you actually want the effect to happen before you get directly to the edge so it's just your webcam now and if i move over here it'll start showing that content so um, again, I think this will be a lot better if you had more of like a parallax effect on a background and it was moving at a different speed than uh, the content. But the idea is that you're looking 
into the perspective of the screen from here and showing content that was rendered off screen. And every time I put my hand in front of my face, it goes away. And then th this afternoon when I was finishing up this demo, I just kept leaning to one side and my fiance was like, <laughs> like, you know, yesterday I was going like this and now I'm just going like this. <laughs> But yeah, um, so that's a little, that's my intro to kind of RTC, get user media, showing off what some other people in the community have started building around WebRTC, so this amazing head tracker library. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be lots more stuff in the near future that's going to be utilizing WebRTC. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Um, Anyone have something cooler to demo? Does anybody have any real questions at all that they want to uh, to ask? So the capture video also works with the smartphone. So not today. Apparently, there's two browsers that do. Uh, a custom build of Chrome, you were saying, for oh. Android, and BlackBerry 10, apparently. So, so yeah, it's BlackBerry, Blackberry 10, 10, supposedly, supposedly I haven't seen it. it. It's supposed to. to. Um, according to somebody that I talked to who did the development for the browser, it should support WebRTC on that. Um, Chrome does Do you natively. Have, is that a BlackBerry 10? Do you want to try it out? Here, one second. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a URL. Uh, so not only does Chrome support it natively without activating anything, but also Firefox, the current version of Firefox, and even 18, version 18, you can go into the about colon config and enable uh, what's called uh, peer dot connected, I'm going to say connected media, but I could be wrong. Search up peer dot and you'll see a connected media. It's disabled by default. Um, if you double click on it, it'll enable it. And then Firefox has... If you go to this uh, URL on your phone... I did do a video as a lead up to this event this week as well on the htmltoronto.ca site. Uh, that oh, does have, have some sample code as well as demonstrations for what browsers do support it um, currently. Can you, can you throw the my screen up there? Absolutely, I can. So here, this URL you can go to the uh, 3pbr.localtunnel.com. And if it does work, we'll actually throw the camera, throw it in front of the camera as well, just as give, to give an example. Live demonstrations on the stream. How daring are we? It, no, yeah. No, it's just like from my laptop. So local tunnel, tunnel, so local tunnel basically tunnels it to that machine. No, no. They, well, they'll be able to probably if there's the 12 people that are actually streaming right now will be able to go to this. They shouldn't though. Are they? I don't know. Is it 3PBR? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't have to do that, actually. Does anybody else have any questions while that's being checked out or uh, um, gone to? So to the mobile So on the mobile browser for Firefox, that isn't there. It's only on the desktop version. So the question was, how do you access it on the mobile device? 
at least I don't believe, there may be an about doc, uh, colon config. I'm looking to one of the other people that might know on a browser, mobile browser. Yeah. No? Okay. Uh, no, I know mobile I Chrome does. Mobile Chrome. Chrome beta for yeah. Android has a there, about Chrome. There is a beta mobile version device. of the Chrome for the Android, as well as a beta version for Opryte, uh, Opera for Android that has the ability to do that as well. It is? Oh, yeah. Wow. So we can confirm uh, there is. <laughs> so let's actually take this and let's throw it in front of the camera here because this is actually very impressive. Uh, let me just throw the camera up. Actually, I can switch the demo uh, to here. So there is. Can we see on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. It is actually functioning there where the stream is being live gone. Yeah. Uh, the BlackBerry's gone to sleep now, probably to save power. <laughs> but it does work, uh, which is great to see a mobile browser um, doing that. Anybody else have any other questions, comments? With this, with this technology, with face tracking, would it be able to work with um, WebGL 3D content as opposed to Canvas 2D? So the question is, does it work with WebGL and other 3D elements within I can answer. That. Sure, that's what we do. So, uh, so the question: Can this work with 3D? Yeah. You can pipe the can. It's a canvas, and your your texture, the texture of your model in your 3D scene is using a canvas. So you can apply. We, we've done this. You can apply video texture to a 3D model pretty easily. Um, running that on mobile browsers, again, you run into WebGL only runs on certain mobile browsers. It apparently runs on. BlackBerry, although it crashed the first time I tried it. Um, it runs in Chrome Beta, runs in Firefox for Android. But Just an example. <laughs> that's CSS3D. Uh, indeed, I believe that's WebKit Transform or trans uh, Transform, CSS Transformations. And is that uh, is that available? So you're going to post that onto the meetup group or a comment on the video or amazing. Awesome! There is a bunch of people going to jQuery to go. Cool. Yeah, but what time? And Alex, what time's yours? Oh, okay. I was going to say. Dun, 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 I'm going to be talking about uh, wrapping jQuery plugins in Angular directives. Um, so if you are playing with Angular, um, you can have more of an Angular style to kind of the jQuery plugin ecosystem and give some practical advice about how do you convert your jQuery plugins to actual Angular directives? Does anybody else have any questions at all? Anything online? Tweet it. Oh, we have somebody at the back. Will they? Because there's a delay. So. So. So all the code that was just demoed is all online at the address that's shown on the screen. Anything else? No? Well, thank you, Alex. That was phenomenal. Um, if you do have any questions, um, both now and afterwards, you can find Alex um, at Alex, uh, underscore Alex Tucker uh, at Twitter. Right. So I'll just give him a little... Go, hey. So reach out to him, say, hey, you're awesome. Say, hey, you're amazing, and I have this problem. Can you actually solve it for me? Um, because I don't know what he does. It'd be notions he must just sit around doing not much there. So <laughs> um, thank you, Alex, for, uh, for that. Um, so 
again, I just want to reiterate and say thank you to everybody that came out tonight. Uh, I did expect about 30 people, hopefully, to come out to this 30-person event, 70-person waiting list, unfortunately. I guess due to weather conditions or something, uh, not everybody was able to make it tonight. Um, but thank you to those who have. Uh, to anybody else on the stream, thank you for coming out. Uh, leave your comments, leave your suggestions, ask tons of questions, interact, engage. Let's see, in fact, what everybody in this room can end up building. Let's share everything together. Let's demonstrate, again, how powerful and how great the Toronto developer community is. Um, big thank you again to Awanda for, uh, for sponsoring the food, the drinks, the amazing equipment that we can now stream for what I've seen, audio and HD video. So if you want to review this afterwards, um, there will be the stream posted on YouTube, embedded onto the website. Go back, review this, see the code, interact, engage, and learn from it, right? That's the whole intent of this, is for us to all learn from these amazing speakers. Um, so apparently the power turned off on the TV. I'm hoping that was the TV and not the actual stream. Did it? Okay. So that was, yeah, a power thing on the TV. Um, thankfully, because that was kind of a freaky point. Um, so actually, if I can invite, uh, invite Matt Fab up, um, two things that I wanted to do while he's making his way, because it's a bit tight here. Um, giveaways. So locally here in Toronto, we're going to be, who's ever here, has the opportunity to win one of um, two amazing t-shirts. I'll give you the other one back when at the office. Uh, one being one of the world famous, apparently, Canadian t-shirts for HTML. Um, so the way I'm going to give this one out, who here doesn't have a Twitter account in this room? Nobody? You don't have a Twitter account? Okay, well, that's fine. Um, sorry, unfortunately not going to be able to help with this one here. Then. Uh, so everybody pull out Twitter. This is going to be good. You guys are going to laugh. You guys are going to like it. And anybody else on the stream, you can tweet along, but unfortunately I can't give you the shirt. Um, so the, f the first person to tweet, and I have it up, I'll be able to tell. Uh, the first person to tweet, it is really hard to dry circle with your face <laughs> at HTML5 underscore Toronto. Cool? And then I'll take a look at the stream, I'll take a look at the tweets, and whoever it was, the first one to get that or first one to end up sending that through will end up getting the t-shirt for this one. Now, Alex, do you have a question for the people on... The other one, the other shirt. Uh, what is the function you have to use in order to capture the uh, video stream or ask for the video stream? What is the function you have to use to ask to capture the video stream? Is this going on Twitter or is this a local? This is going here again. I can't give the t-shirts out online. <laughs> so, so you don't have to do tweets. You don't have to do Twitter for this one here. I don't, I'm not expecting Twitter for this one. You can scream it out. Raise your hand, in fact, for okay. this one here. I think we already had a, have a winner, so. <laughs> yeah, you got it? That was, that was the first, first answer I saw. Awesome. Cool. So give us the t-shirt. There you go. Congratulations. This could be on, or should I use this? So, hey guys, uh, just got home, unpacked, studio back, hopefully set up and working. I do see peaks in the audio, so I'm hoping the audio is going to be fine for this. I haven't had time to test. Um, but at the event, I had noticed during uh, Matt Fab's presentation on FITC, the uh, the new Spotlight event that they have, as well as what they're doing for um, women developers and FITC women. Uh, the audio happened to go horribly wrong with this feedback loop. Um, so I want to make sure that I take the time and really uh, give that what it really deserves, or at least my interpretation, or at least not, maybe not as good as Matt Fab did, but um, at least something. So without further ado, here's what should have been said and probably accommodating uh, hopefully for Sean don't kill me if you actually see this uh, trying um, anyway so for everybody who is in the group and who is watching the video uh, before uh, FITC spotlight uh, web optimization is coming out 
um, I figured this is the perfect group to have this on, yeah, spotlight web optimization with the web group. So talking with the guys and whatnot, we've got a couple of special deals for you. So let me just switch over to the presentation for a bit. Um, so FITC, you guys probably all know, a bunch of you already see me speak there. Uh, used to be Flash the Can is now Future Innovation Technology create, uh, Creativity. Um, there's a this new Spotlight event that's coming up. Um, website can be found FITC.ca slash event slash SPW13. Uh, which is web performance and optimization. Uh, tickets are regularly 139 people, but first 10 people to use, and yes, this includes everybody that's watching the stream. If it's before the event, go ahead, try to get within this. I encourage it. I strongly support this event. Uh, I get 50% off um, if uh, if you use HTML spot. So first 10 people to use HTML Spotlight will get 10% off. Um, for anybody in the group, if you're not able to get that, uh, there is 20% discount code for our group that if you put in HTML5 WPO, you get 20% off the discount price. So that's $139 minus 20% discount, and you get to learn about all kinds of stuff for web performance and optimization. It's a great event. I strongly suggest you go uh, if you get the chance, if you can, because this is obviously what we do. Um, so what the event's going to be covering for FITC Toronto uh, this year, which is actually coming up very shortly. Uh, by shortly, I mean, I think it's in April. How does this? I'm sorry. In fact, it even says right there, April 20th to 23rd. Uh, for anybody who hasn't been to these, they're amazing. You meet some amazing people. A um, bunch of stuff happening there. By all means, take a look at that. Uh, but more information will be broadcast for the group closer to the event. Um, I really want to see if we can start hammering down and let's, Let's take the HTML group here and fill up that spotlight event um, and make sure that we know that Toronto is going to be on the mark for HTML developers. But HTML, uh, sorry, FITC Toronto is coming up as well. Um, like I said earlier, so FITC is trying to uh, really encourage uh, the women in the Toronto developer community and women in uh, technology to step up and step forward. Uh, recently, there's been a, a bunch of stuff that's been kind of going back and forth, like the gaming industry for uh, developers that are women. Uh, now, personally, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, I, for me and for our group, I want you guys to know uh, there is no gender in our group that I'm seeing as an event organizer. It's a very much, you're a developer. I, I don't care. I am encouraging women to do speaking. Uh, I am encouraging, obviously, the opposite gender to um, to, to step up as well as FITC. Um, but know that you guys are all the same to me. I guess it doesn't really sound right. However, that's going to sound, especially considering this is also during talking about FITC, uh, non-bad. Take it that way. <laughs> but yeah, so I encourage you. So the FITC women... FIT is giving away 50 free tickets, um, make a short film, write a blog post, etc, etc. There's instructions on the screen here. Uh, go take a look what you can do and really step up to the plate. Like We really want to encourage this. So please, if you are a girl in tech or a woman in tech, um, submit and uh, you can get free tickets to FITC and really showcase what you're doing. So, um, And lastly, let me just remove my ugly little face here. Uh, well, almost last. FITC awards are coming up. If you want to submit something, uh, I believe it's, yeah, it's March 8th for the deadline for this. Um, $75 to submit. Uh, if you want, you can either submit yourself to this uh, or you can submit an artist, um, a, th a developer. Uh, there's a slew of different categories which you can do. Um, you can also nominate people for free. Um, obviously for the four categories, best Canadian studio uh, website, best Canadian designer website, developer, and student. Um, so submit. If you have ideas, go ahead. Please do so. Um, they are they really do make a difference. You don't want the, the market to be influxed with the, all the same people that are always submitting their own things. So if you see something creative that somebody you know has made, a studio or an individual or an independent or a freelancer, Submit it. This is why they do this. And what we're trying to do this year is really spread the word that it isn't just the studio heads that are making the decisions. It's you guys, right? So please, deadlines March 8th, submit. Um, and last but not least, uh, we do have two tickets to give away for tonight's event. Uh, at the event, from last I had heard, nobody had tweeted this out because everybody dropped off the stream and uh, we started discussing things. Well, 
during the event, but uh, people were uh, either had tickets to the event already or were planning on buying them. Uh, so if you do tweet, and we're only doing the first two within, I think it's a 24 or 48 hour period. Uh, so catch this, watch the video. Um, at the end of this, obviously I'm doing this here at the end. A tweet out, at FITC, send me to Spotlight, web performance and optimization on March 16th, exclamation mark, ha wow, that's a lot of, hashtag HTML5 UG. Now, that last part is key, is crucial. This is what they're going to be searching for along with the send me to web performance optimization. You need to ensure you do include that uh, because that way they know that we sent you that our group was the one that actually submitted this and uh, that you're paying attention through our group. Anyway, good luck to everybody. Um, I hope to see you guys all there. I am heading out to both Web Optimization and to FITC Toronto. I will be at both events, uh, strongly supporting the community and strongly supporting you guys um, because this group really does, uh, it's really starting to shine. Um, and it's all because of you. We want to showcase what you guys have to do so, good job. Anyway, uh, back to, I guess, me at the event. So, again, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everybody, uh, this group. I'm hopefully going to be doing a lot over the next course of the several months here, um, including trying to make really good connections, hopefully getting you guys some absolutely uh, outstanding speakers to come out, talk to you guys, give demonstrations. Uh, but quite honestly, I'd really look for... Uh, from everybody here and everybody on, afterwards on the video, what do you want to see come out of the group? What do you want to learn? Uh, we do surveys regularly, but I'm always up for advice. What's, what's a hot topic? Um, tonight's event and tonight's topic, the WebRTC, we posted the event thanks to a, actually an idea that you had that you wanted to come up with. Um, and for some reason, about a day and a half after we posted the event, WebRTC blew up online. So either the developers here in Toronto are that just right on the money, uh, or I don't know what. Um, so offer your suggestions up. Reach out. Build something. If, if you have an idea, um, let's hear it. Seriously, let's make sure that your ideas and your um, wants are met. So thank you again. And seriously, have a safe drive home. Thank you. We'll be around here if you do... We will be around for questions and answers afterwards. I'm going to put back the stream on. So our great stream music, um, we're reaching out. We're going to be highlighting and showcasing Canadian artists. If you want to hear somebody, if you have an idea for an artist, you know somebody, send them our way. We're going to highlight and showcase one of the Canadian artists uh, for music for every one of our events. So thank you.